from coast to coast, live via satellite, it's time to praise the Lord. From beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, we invite you to be part of the world's largest prayer gathering. Appearing on Praise the Lord are President Ronald Reagan, Reverend Jerry and Sandy Bernard, Joe Myers, Roger McDonald. Take your call, some of the most beautiful prayer partners in the world. Now your host, President and founder of the Trinity Broadcasting Network. Welcome, welcome, everybody in Phoenix, Arizona, and across this nation. It's time to praise the Lord. Oh, we love it. We have a little special help here tonight, and it's wonderful. It is wonderful. We love you all so much. It's great to be in the Valley of... What a welcome. Wasn't that wonderful? That was wonderful. Such a spontaneous, warm, unrehearsed welcome. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts, Dwight. <laughs> Wherever he is. In case you didn't catch a little scene over here, Dwight Thompson was kind of leading the opening tonight. He was doing a wonderful job. He has an unknown talent that I wasn't aware of. Floor director, do you need a job, do I? We pay 200 a week. <laughs> How you all doing? Everybody happy tonight? Ready to praise the Lord with us? I'll tell you, we've had a wonderful three nights in Phoenix. This is the fourth, and now great finale tomorrow evening with Pastor Danny Schaefer. He'll be preaching tonight. Jerry and Sandy Bernard are here. Oh, my, it's going to be wonderful. You want to say a little word of greeting to these good folks well, tonight we before we get on? Well, we announced that the world's greatest preacher would be here tonight. Greatest? So Dwight Thompson, Danny Schaefer, and Jerry Bernard all showed up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, too. I'm here, too. Yes, of course. Isn't that great? That's wonderful. They're little all um, <laughs> case of mistaken identity, I guess, somewhere. I don't know in well, exactly where. We'll see which one gets the mic first. That'll be it. <laughs> all right, all right. You know what? Why don't we uh, have somebody start with a song, and then we're all going to gather for prayer. In fact, uh, we'll just have every one of them come, and uh, we'll have a great prayer season together, believing God for another great night of revival. I know Jerry Bernard has heard from heaven and is going to open the word to us tonight. Tomorrow night, Pastor Dan Schaefer is going to be preaching. Last night, we had the greatest night, I guess, in the whole uh, week of revival as Dwight Thompson preached a tremendous message, and thousands phoned in from across America to receive Christ as Savior and to rededicate their lives to the Lord. So I just believe God wants to do it again. I'll tell you, I know He does. God is giving us these powerful tools and lighthouses for one primary reason, and that is to pull in the net and lead and introduce men and women to the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, it's great to be with you. I just love Phoenix. If the Lord doesn't come, Jan and I have plans to retire somewhere very special. And... Uh, I better not say where, because uh, <laughs> then I'll hurt the folks' feelings in Oklahoma or Miami or somewhere. We'll just retire everywhere. When I don't think we're going to get a chance to do that. I believe the Lord is coming so soon. I think every one of us are going to do just what Papa Billheimer has been saying all this. We're going to cheat the undertaker. 
Hallelujah. We're going to rise to meet Jesus in the air. Amen. Roger McDuff is going to get us underway musically tonight. Let's get Roger over on the music set and have him sing a great song of praise. And then we're going to open our hearts to the Lord. If you have a prayer need, phone it in right now. The numbers are on your screen. We're going to be your prayer partners together as we praise God for what he's going to do tonight. You got your new shoes on, Roger? We'll talk about them a little bit later, all right? Right now he's talking about just what I've been talking about, only in song. Jesus is coming. Let's tell Roger McDuff it's good to have him in Phoenix, Channel 21 tonight. Jesus was talking to his disciples. He spoke of the Holy Ghost power and might. When he had spoken and as they beheld him, a great cloud received him right out of their sight. But Jesus is coming, oh Jesus is coming. When is he coming? Just today now. Why is he coming? He's coming to get us. How is he coming on the snow white cloud? Among men, as a perfect example, with God living in man, the things he can do. He left us a road map to carry the gospel. He gave us the power to spread the good news. But Jesus is coming, oh Jesus is coming. When is he coming? Just today now. Why is he coming? He's coming to get us. How is he coming on the show? Again, death could not kill, the grave could not hold him, and time can't destroy him. He's coming back again, the Savior of men. But Jesus is coming, oh Jesus is coming. When is he coming? Just any day now. Why is he coming? He's coming to get us. How is he coming on the snow white? Roger McDuff, what a joy to have him with us in Phoenix. Come on, Roger, come on over and let's have prayer together. Pastor Danny Schaefer, come. Dwight, you're here. Everybody that's here in the studio, just come on up. Let's have a great opening prayer time together. There at home, join hands with somebody. We're going to agree together for a great night of spiritual refreshing and blessing. Hello, Pastor Schaefer and Bonnie. Well, hello, Paul and Jen. I have this Bible question I'd like to ask you. <laughs> Seems like I get a lot of Bible <laughs> questions lately. How many of you all see the answer every once in a while across the network? Have you ever phoned a question in? Some of them phoned a question. Where did Cain get his wife? Well, he married his sister. Really? Oh, yes, had to. Mm -hmm. It's the only explanation. Did anybody ever ask you that before? Oh, yes, I get that. I get that every week. <laughs> every week. I thought so. No, she, you want my answer? What? She came from Nod, the land of Nod. The land of Nod. The Bible does say that, doesn't it? He went to the land of Nod and knew mm -hmm. his wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. see what happens. In the King James Version, it says that he went there and knew his wife, and people feel like that means that he met her and became acquainted with her. Mm -hmm. But uh, knew her means that he had marriage relations with her so they could start the, the race. human race. Right. I see. But, what is but Eve, the Bible says, was a mother of all living. She was the first woman. Adam was the first man, very clearly said. 
And uh, so the only place that Cain could have found a wife was his sister. In those days, it was not incest because the race had to get started somewhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you start with two, you got to intermarry until you get going. That's right. <laughs> what, what is the most often asked question or one of the most often asked questions you get? The unpardonable sin. What is it? Uh, a lot of questions about eternal security. Mm -hmm. That really is, is that really is on people's minds, and uh, what are some of them, Bonnie? You read them. I don't know. I'm praying they're right about eternal security, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, and uh, we just uh, about the you know the rapture and the unborn babies. What happens to them? That comes in every week. Mm -hmm. Right. What happens to uh, what happens to a woman who's expecting a child at the rapture, mm -hmm. if the uh, yes. mother is not a Christian? Mm -hmm. Does the baby go or not? No, I think the baby stays with the unchristian mother. If the mother is a Christian, I believe that at the rapture, when the change takes place, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, we shall all be changed, mm -hmm. that at that time there are two distinct persons, and at the rapture, the mother and the baby are distinct persons raptured mm -hmm. to, uh, mm -hmm. to be with Jesus. Yeah. So, in other words, if the mother is not ready to go in the rapture and she's carrying an unborn child, are you saying the child would go on to heaven then? No. No, I think this child stays because it, uh, the believing parent sanctifies the child, 1 Corinthians 7. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there is a penalty there. Uh, I think if the child is already born, that it will go, although there are some who disagree with that even. They mm -hmm. think that the children of unsaved parents will stay with them mm -hmm. and go through the tribulation. And that's a very prominent teaching, and it's possible. Mm -hmm. But I just think that all uh, children beneath the age of accountability will, will go. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that an unborn child will. I think they'll go ahead and have a natural birth in the tribulation and be, be reared at that time. The Bible doesn't really make it clear does it it's just no no that's that's a reason that it's so often asked because you can't say chapter and verse uh, of exactly how it is but it's interesting <laughs> we, we, we've started something here roger's got a question <coughs> what what the baby that's born two minutes after the rapture see mm -hmm. so it would still be here Yes, seven but years. It, it, would, it would not reach the age of accountability because the tribulation is only seven years. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, you know. Mm. It's Interesting. Be a Food time. for thought. When What's your question, Roger? When we're witnessing to the youth, uh, mostly who are unchurched, and uh, they find it hard to cope with the unfairness of where did God come from anyhow? And that's, that seems to be one of the most uh, forefront questions when I'm talking to someone on the street who has been in drugs and they want to know who is this God that would judge me where did he come from mm -hmm. you get that too don't you oh I get that all the time the scripture says that God came from Taman hmm? where's Taman <laughs> well that's a little known thing but uh, that simply is talking about God leading Israel through Taman. That's over in the Jordan area when he was coming into the Holy Land. But a lot of people think that he did originate <laughs> because he came from some strange place like that. But it isn't so. The Bible says, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. There never was a time when there was not a God. There never will be a time when there's not a God. Uh, God is eternal. Now, in our finite minds, it's hard to understand that. But God is eternal. He has always existed. He always will exist. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the main question, Roger, that young people want to know is that if God knew that man was going to sin, mm. why would he create, him? Would he create man? Yeah. And uh, if God knew the devil was going to become a devil, why, you see? Yeah. But the answer to that is that uh, God, in his creative process, in order to keep from making people as robots who were forced to serve him, which would be a, a creator and a doll relationship. Mm -hmm. If God could push a button and say, you're going to love me whether you want to or not, there could be no real reciprocal love. It would be a robot experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like someone you would make that would do all of your work and had no choice. But the only way that you can love is through free will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A person has to decide, I love that's you. Right. Yeah. And God has to decide, I love <laughs> you. And so in order, that's the risk that had to be taken. Mm -hmm. You see, it's not God's fault because he made everyone perfect and willed that none should perish. Mm 
but that all should be saved. But, uh, but in order to have a reciprocal love relationship between God and his creation, and I'm going to talk about that tomorrow night. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, in order to have that relationship, man had to be a free moral agent, had to have a free will, and then had to have a choice with the possibility of sinning if he so desired. Mm -hmm. Now, if a person wants to go to hell, God will let him. Doesn't want him to, right. but he'll let him because he has a free will. That's that person's choice. But through Jesus Christ, everybody can be saved that will come to him. You know, the whole thing is good news, really. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, we've just gotten a little Hallelujah. mini The Answer program right at the beginning of Praise the Lord. If you enjoy this kind of thing or if you want to participate, sending in a question, do so. Watch The Answer every week right on the whole Trinity Broadcasting Network. Let's say you do it in uh, Oklahoma City on... Tuesday nights? Tuesday night. The whole network goes Tuesday night, just 30 minutes before the praise. Right. The half hour before praise the Lord on Tuesday night, always you will see the answer on the entire Trinity Broadcasting Network. Amen. All right. Uh, Pastor Schaefer, just before you lead us in prayer, you said you had one little story about Christian television that relates what, to Channel 14 you wanted to share with us? Exactly right, Paul. <coughs> uh, two weeks ago, I officiated at the service of a man who died and uh, I learned a tremendous story when I visited the family and and found him a man named George George was a hard drinking chain smoking pill popping truck driver big rough guy and uh, an alcoholic and uh, smoked uh, three packs a day or more and uh, popped his pills to stay awake and to stay on the road and so forth his children had never heard him pray he never had a spiritual inclination. Mm -hmm. But on March the 12th, two years ago, almost two years ago, when Channel 14 opened up in Oklahoma City, oh, yeah. during that week of dedication, George was at home watching Channel 14. And that night, God reached out through that television set, got a hold of him by Holy Spirit conviction, and he called one of the prayer partners and uh, prayed the prayer with them and accepted Christ as Savior, turned his name in. In turn, that name was turned to the local church. One of my elders went to visit him in his home. But the very night that he called TBN, accepted Christ, he had a Saul of Tarsus conversion. Trem totally changed by God's power. Totally delivered from alcohol, from tobacco, from dope changed started the church every time his children came into his house he said i'm praying for you i'm calling you by name mm -hmm. tbn sent him a bible he bought two more translations he read the word and one night after he'd been to church at crossroads cathedral he he went home fell asleep reading the word during the night god called him away mm -hmm. but he went to heaven because mm -hmm. channel 14 mm -hmm. and 24 hour a day Christian television story. came to Oklahoma City, oh, and that's wow. the story that I wanted to tell you, and that's a true story. Uh, we love those kind of stories, Pastor Schaefer. It kind of makes the long hours and the nights under hot lights worth it a billion, million times over, even if only one soul, if only George was the only soul, the only convert we had, it'd all be worth it, wouldn't it? Exactly right. And one week before he died, his brother had called him, who was a minister, and uh, he had received, George had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit oh in, a, in a telephone oh conversation. <laughs> it all started with Christian television. And you know, that's, that's a story that I found out about simply because I was called to preach a funeral. How many thousands of stories out there that we will never hear till we get to the other side? I tell you, when one of these days, when all God's people get home and we really take the tally in God's own words of what Christian television has done to preach Christ to a world, it is going to be one of the greatest camp meeting hallelujah spells that heaven is oh, yeah. ever going to experience because of what God's doing. Would you like to hear one more, just real quick one? Jan got a special letter today, and I, I want you to hear this. This is so special. This is the sweetest thing. It's from Lawndale, California. It says, Dear Paul and Jan, I'm writing to ask you to take my little father off the mailing list because he has a new address now. <laughs> he went home to be with Jesus 
on August the 14th, and he was 86 years old. When he was 84 years old, he accepted your plea to make Jesus the Lord of his life. He loved to watch you when you were all excited and you jumped and you played the tambourine. In the spring of 81, during the praise my father called in a pledge. While he talked, giving the telephone prayer partner, uh, to, the, to the telephone prayer partner, Jesus healed his right arm from nerve degeneration. His hand would shake so badly he could rarely use it. But after that, call his hand was perfectly steady Mm. the (laughs) next morning he came to visit us and told us that Jesus had come to visit him and heal him Mm. he said he sat up all night just praising the Lord and looking at awe at what the Lord had just done for him he asked all of us close to him to pray that he could just go home to be with Jesus So on August the 14th, he ate his dinner. He sat down in his little easy chair. He went to sleep and went home. (laughs) Thank you for all the joy that you brought to my papa's life. He loved TBN so much. We love TBN also. We're both prayer partners and telephone prayer partners. Yours in Christ Jesus, Kathleen Kims from Lawndale, California. Oh, golly. Oh, my. Is Christian television worth it? I keep asking that question, and the answer, of course, is always the same. Yes. A million times, yes, it's worth it. Every tear you've shed, every sacrifice you've made, every battle we've fought and won has been worth it. Yes. Again and again and again. And we'll keep on fighting. We'll keep on praying. We'll keep on proclaiming. We'll keep on winning the lost as long as you'll be our partners. Praise God. Praise God. Pastor Schaefer, lead us in prayer. Let's believe God for another great night of harvest and soul winning together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this great week. Every night the thousands have responded. No telling how many thousands who could not get through to the phone lines, but you, Heavenly Father, know them all. And we've just heard of two who are in heaven now because a number of years ago, Paul and Jan Crouch heard the call, paid the price, and started this marvelous Trinity Broadcasting Network that now is reaching multiplied millions every week. We thank you for the great revival that has come from this Phoenix station to the entire network. For all who have been saved and all who have been healed and all who have been blessed. And I pray that tonight will be the greatest night of all, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit shall be upon the ministry of the word, upon the singers as they sing, upon Paul and Jan as they direct. We pray, Lord, that our prayer partners will have just the right words anointed of the Holy Spirit to deal with those calls that come in from the multiplicity of cares and sins that people bear. We thank you for our audience who is here and all of the millions that we do not know, and yet they're there. I pray and we all agree that this shall be the night when the harvest shall come in, when the thousands shall be saved, the name of Jesus shall be lifted up, that the will of God can be accomplished. Lord, your will, your will be done in the telecast tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, let's give the Lord another great praise offering and thanks for what he's done. The phone lines are open right now. If you have a prayer need or a praise report or something that you need from the Lord tonight, let us know. We'll be your prayer partners. We'll have another great prayer meeting together, two or three of them. 
more before this program is over. But right now, let's have some more music. It's great to have Joe Baez. Joe, you've been in Phoenix with us before, haven't you? Yes. One, one other time. Um, it's great to have you at the Great Week of Revival from Channel 21 in Phoenix. Let's give Joe another great big valley of the sun. Welcome as he sings. Don't let this moment pass you by. This moment pass you by. Jesus is waiting with his arms open wide. He's willing to supply all of the needs in your life. Take my advice, don't let this moment pass you by. Don't let this moment pass you by. Is waiting with his arms open wide. He's willing to supply all of the needs in your life. Take my advice, don't let this moment pass you by. Take my advice, don't let this moment pass you by. This is the day, and I know the time is right for you to have fulfilled this day in your life. Just open your heart and give Jesus a try. Take my advice, don't let this moment pass you by. Thank you, Joe Baez. You know, this is a very special year, and we are going to have many very special moments that we won't let pass us by. I think everybody knows it by, by now, but just in case, did you all know this is the year of the Bible? How many know that's the, the special year that we're celebrating ever since President Reagan signed into law? I got to see him do it. Oh, I wish I could have had you all there with me. It was a glorious moment. I mean, it was a moment where you could just take a knife and just cut it right out of the atmosphere. I mean, it was just that awesome to see our president, the most powerful political leader on the face of planet Earth, walk over and put his signature on a document that declares 1983 to be the year of God's holy word, the Bible. By the way... Our 
March newsletter is now in the mail. I got the first copy over here today. And if you aren't on the mailing list, you better write in or call in right now because this special newsletter is filled with pictures of the president and his signing the proclamation and some other things that will be very, very special and important to you. It's free every month. Jan puts together a beautiful little uh, newsletter and tells us all the good things. You, you kind of enjoy that, I don't you? I do enjoy it. It's like kind of our little love letter. I pick special letters and send them to them. And um, this month it, it has, I don't know if you've heard me read a thing called the Bible where it says, I walked into the portico of Genesis and went all the way through, and then it ends with, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. And I published that this month. And uh, there's a little article from Papa Billheimer, little Papa Billheimer in there, one of his special little articles. And we just put it together with pictures and things every month, and it's yours free. Just kind of our little talking back and forth. A little letter to them. They write to us. We write to them. So we write back to them. That's right. Just for my information, is there anybody in the audience here tonight that does not regularly each month get the little newsletter that Jan puts together? Hold your hand up. Let me just see. It. Take a little. Oh my goodness. Uh -huh. You haven't written to me yet. <laughs> I'm going to come see you. Uh -huh. I thought so. Sign them up. Get the little slips over. How many would like to be? on the newsletter and receive it free every month. All right, we'll take care of it. Fill the little slip out. We pass them out to you. Anna Marie, maybe you can make sure everybody gets the little slip over there so they can fill it out, give us your address, and without any obligation, we'll put you on the mailing list and send Jan's love letter out to you every month. All right, we're going to take you for just one minute back to Washington, D.C. Just a few days ago, I got to be there as your representative to see President Reagan sign into law there at the Hilton Hotel 1983, the year of the Bible. Let's watch him do it one more time. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will heal their land. I would like to sign a proclamation which will make 1983 the year of the Bible. And I want to thank Senator Bill Armstrong and Representative Carlos Moorhead and all those inside and outside of Congress who assisted them and made this all possible. Thank you and God bless you and I'm going down and sign the proclamation. Aren't you proud of our president? Pray for him every day. God spared his life for us that we might have this man who would lead the way. Now, Christians, if we don't get in there and support him and follow him, I don't care what your political affiliation is. If you love Jesus, you have to applaud what he just did. And now if we'll get in there and work this year, Dr. Bill Bright will be our guest in the next few days on the praise program. He's asked me to serve on that committee on your behalf. And we're going to dream up some of the wildest, most wonderful things this year to do. We may just buy the Coca-Cola sign on <laughs> Times Square. We just may do it and put the Bible on it. And just, wouldn't that be great to just let the whole Bible run? You know, the whole Bible... I'm still asking you all for ideas. Now, I mean, Jan said we ought to skywrite the Bible in the sky, and I thought, well, that's a little temporary. The wind blows too much, and it would go away too fast. Um, and then we've gotten some other wonderful ideas. Good, th uh, Maybe we ought to rent, let's buy the Goodyear blimp and just fly it all over everywhere and just let the Bible run 24 hours a day. Let the, You know, really, let your imagination just run wild, and if the Lord drops a a special thing, let us know. We'll do it. I mean, we're just going to do anything that makes sense at all and a few things that don't make sense, okay? Uh, because we want this whole world to know that this is the year of God's holy word. Oh, my. Well, I can't get started on this or I'll just get carried away. But we're going to do some wonderful, 
wild, way out, far out things this year. And you're going to be a part of it. Yes, and you can help us do it. Let's have Betty Jean sing us a song. One of the good old timers. We love it so much. On the way home. Let's go home with Betty Jean right now. Can't you see it everywhere? This old world's rumbling. Can't you feel it in the air? Neighbor, tell your neighbor, oh, sing a happy song. It's time to get started on the way home. When you were singing that song, Paul reminded me, said, honey, please go have Betty Jean tell what her little Sunday said about that song. Betty Jean's got a little grandbaby. She is the cutest thing you've ever seen. She looks, she's got Betty Jean's little face. But her, her daddy, which is Betty Jean's son-in-law, is Filipino, so she's got those beautiful little slanted eyes and that little nose she's the cutest thing i've ever seen in my life we went to melody mountain and had a day with her at betty jean's house but she sings that song too doesn't yes. she one ha one sunday what happened when she was yes my, becky my daughter uh, she said mom you won't believe what sunday was singing today sunday takes my songs paul and messes them up a sight but she was coming home from church and uh, uh Becky said she was in the back of the car, and she's saying, on the way home, on the way home, talk about your preacher, on the way home. <laughs> I know that story. It must be preacher talk about it. <laughs> talk about your preacher all the way home. So she got to really straighten little Sunday out. That's the cutest. You know, Dean, your pianist, accompanist, 
has written a beautiful song. I think we should dedicate this to the year of the Bible. It's a yes. beautiful song. Tell how he how he wrote that. Well, uh, you know, he said he had asked the Lord, and he wrote this song about a year and a half ago, and he asked the Lord, he said, Lord, you've been giving Betty Jean songs like he is Jehovah, the God that healeth thee, and said, let me write something uh, about you. And he said, the Lord just said, write something about my word, which is God. And uh, I want to sing this for Joe Baez especially, but it's called God's Infallible Word. And we didn't know we was going to record it this year, and we didn't know this was going to be the year of the Bible. Of course, every year is the word of it's the Bi year of the Bible, but especially this year. The Lord Amen. The Lord yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jan. Freedom for the captive, vision for the blind, healing for the body, peace for the mind. Life to those who find it, health unto their flesh, a living revelation of the future and the past. And blessed are those who have heard God's infallible word. Given for correction, doctrine and reproof, instruction in righteousness, judgment and truth, transforming believers into the likeness of the Son, to walk in love and victory with power to overcome. Betty Jean, that's so great. I, it's just, well, the Lord knew this was going to be the year of the Bible, so he gave that beautiful song, and I'm sure we'll have other wonderful songs that will honor God's wonderful and holy word. Roger, get ready to sing another song for us, but as he comes, how many want to go with me to Hallelujah, New York? Raise your hand. If the Lord would make it possible, you'd go. Everybody wants to go to Hallelujah, New York. Arthur Blessed's coming back from Europe to be with us for that special occasion. June the 11th, Saturday the 11th, we're going to Times Square. And if you haven't heard the good news, they've given us the word, we can take the Holy Beamer right down Broadway. <laughs> New Yorkers think they've seen everything, but they haven't seen a Holy Beamer. <laughs> and we're going to take it right down Broadway through Times Square. Nikki Cruz, Arthur Blessed, Jan and I are going to go. You got your witness and oh, shoes on? Yes, can't wait. You and I have gone two or three times just for our little 
Hallelujah, New York's just yes, all by did. ourselves and giving out many hundreds of dolls to the children and the gospel of Jesus Christ, John 3, 16. Tried to learn to speak Spanish over in Spanish Harlem, trying to say Channel 54, and all I could do was go, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, cuatro. <laughs> Back when that wasn't it at all. No. But anyway, we've gone and witnessed. We've seen the need. We've seen the people laying out in the middle of the streets. We've seen them laying in the, by the garbage heaps in the streets. We've seen the hurt and the pains and the sadness, but also people. <laughs> We've seen yes, the yes. light at the end of that darkness. Yes, and I tell you, Channel 54 is that lighthouse, and it's going to be on. Satan has kept 24-hour-a-day Christian television out of that town longer than any town. Do you, do you hear that? Yeah, that's the biggest. Thing. It's the biggest? Well, is it the one in, biggest in the world? One of be the one of the biggest. And it does not have to this day, 24-hour-a-day Christian television. But <laughs> June the 13th, we sign it on the air 24 hours a day. Mm. There's a light mm -hmm. at the end of the dark. Yes. Hallelujah. And it's shining for the whole world to see. Mm -hmm. Praise God. People are getting excited. Well, I'm excited because we are going to throw that big switch and uh, cross that Hudson up and down the length and breadth of that Hudson River Valley. 16 million souls under the pattern of mighty 5 million watt channel 54. We're going to have the glorious gospel. Amen. That touched a nerve with Roger McDuff. New well, York's I, very special to your heart. Well, isn't we, we got a call from uh, Reverend Coleman Barlow from back up in there and his church has, uh, it has totally, Paul, I've been to the church and it has totally turned it around. It? Uh, it's in Connecticut it? and uh, he wants, he called the other night, he wants to know if he can bring, they want to bring busloads of people from their area to this event. And we accept. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> Brother Barlow, if you're listening, and it has, let me tell you, their church, which is an Assembly of God church, which it is, uh, I would say 85% of the people in there are Catholic, and they have been saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, and their church exploded. Now they've had to go out and they got an auditorium that was a Jewish uh, a health spa and they've had to expand. Right. <laughs> and uh, they have a handball and jacuzzi and all that good stuff. And, uh, but this thing has literally turned that church around. And anywhere else that I have been in that area, that's all I hear is what is happening with this great station up there. So bring the bus loads of people. Well, well, Roger, I hope that you can come and be with us I'm for that. Channel yes, 54. You're going to be there. Oh, yes. wonderful, wonderful. We believe Ken Copeland is going to be there. Uh, he's going to be opening in Madison Square Garden that week. And uh, so we've invited him to come, and I believe he's going to be there the 13th, the night we throw the big switch. The beautiful new studio will soon be finished. They're putting the final finishing touches on it right now, right at the corner of I-84 and State Route Number 9 in the little village of Fishkill, New York. There's going to be a mighty, mighty big, as we said back in Missouri, big doings, big doings on the 13th of June. We're going to have the mayor and everybody. It's going to be wonderful. And those of you that would like to go now, the reason I mention this is we are going to have a beautiful hallelujah march down Broadway through Times Square and then up to Central Park. Nikki Cruz will be with us and we'll have a great outdoor open air rally there. We'll be telling everybody about Jesus and, of course, Channel 54, too. And uh, then John knows where these worked out a lovely little tour. It's about a four or five day tour, and you can fly in from anywhere in the country, meet us there at Times Square. He's got a little package worked out for hotel and meals and buses to take us up to Poughkeepsie uh, to the new studio there. And then you can be there for the big throw the big switch service. And then, of course, maybe even stay a few more days if you want to make it a vacation time in the New York area. It's a great place to have a vacation. And uh, so if you'd like to go, write a note real quick or s give us a call and we'll send you the little brochure out. Some of you may want to go to the Holy Land and come on back. We've timed it so that all of us who come back from the Holy Land will land just at the right time to move right on into Hallelujah, New York. So if you want to go with us, either or both, let us us know and we'll send you the brochure. The devil is already dreading June the 11th. Oh, he's dreading that day. And June the 13th, he can't stand it. <laughs> because over New York City, 24 hours a day. Oh, 
I've just been so thrilled this week, honey. The breakthrough has already occurred. We're getting many salvations out of New York City, the Bronx, Long Island, Stanton Island, up through the Northwest Chester County. New York is going to know Jesus. Yes, they are. In a new and a living way. If you want information, let us know right away. Did you know how big our God is? Bigger than any mountain. What? Bigger than any mountain. That sounds like a song. I wonder if Roger could sing something about that right now. Let's welcome him to Praise the Lord. Bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my questions, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all the shadows that fall across my path, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my confusion, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my He's bigger than all the giants I fear and I fear each God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. He's bigger than all of our hang-ups, bigger than anything God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. He's bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears. God is bigger than any mountain that I can. Get up, Mr. Sandman. Let's sing it again, Roger. I just believe if you'd sing that one more time, some mountains would just go away right now. Oh, uh, let me tell you. I believe it. We was having some church here a few days ago, and this mama come and be we, we, me in the services, and oh, did we move some mountains that night, didn't we, mama? <laughs> I want you to know she was on the hallelujah. She brought the preach out me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She, she oh, she said sick them, but I want you to know the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no matter how big they are, we got a God that's bigger. Yes. He can do anything. You know, somebody said, can God do anything? He can do anything. What's anything mean? That means just anything. Yes. Anything you can think of. You say, can God restore my eye? Yes, he can. Amen. If you can build your faith Amen. to a level that you can believe God for it, God can do that. And to that one that's laying there that has a colostomy. In the hospital, I want you to know that God is bigger than the problems. The doctors don't know what to do, but God made you, and he can give you another brand new whatever it is that you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, turn me on. Let me sing it while the cradle pops. Glory to God. Bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot 
I think we may have a new singing group here. Uh, Roger McDuff and friends. <laughs> Praise God. Many of you are going to find out tonight the song is true and God is bigger than that problem in your life tonight. A beautiful brother I want to introduce right now. In fact, I think I'll introduce him right on the music set here because, yes, not only does he preach the word like a prophet, but he sings under a mighty anointing. We love him so much. He really needs no introduction, especially here in Phoenix, because Jerry Bernard has come and ministered to us here many, many times, and of course, many times across the whole Trinity Broadcasting Network. He and his lovely wife, Sandy, have a great ministry down in San Diego, California. Christian Faith Center is a great church that he pastors. Christian Television Network, uh, CCN, Christian Communications Network, actually. A beautiful Christian television ministry that he's involved in, 24-hour day Christian television via cable down in the great city of San Diego. We love him so. He's ministered to Jan and me a very special way at special times. In fact, Jerry, I don't know. I think God knew you had to be there that night when Jan and I we're making a very critical decision whether or not even to go on with Christian television. And God revealed to Jerry Bernard through a vision the problem we were facing and with it the answer. That mountain has moved, Jerry. God's laser beam took it right out of the way and 24 hour a day Christian television is on the air. Let's welcome him from San Diego, evangelist, pastor, TV brother, Jerry Bernard. How you doing? Hello, Paul. Love you. Bless the Lord. Good to see you. Thank you. Hello, Phoenix. <laughs> My goodness. You got help tonight, I'll tell you. This is a fantastic group of people, and the power of God is here, and God is going to do something beautiful among his people. I don't know what it is, but it's special, and it's God's time. And I believe that God's people are ready. You know what we should do? Let's just pray and ask the Lord what he would have us to do right now. All right. All right. 
Would you, Roger, come in here and join us. And Jan, let's all believe God that his Holy Spirit will just do exactly what needs to be done at this instant. Great God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We feel your presence. We sense the mighty anointing of God. And we know that this nation is filled with people that know the anointing of God. We know that this studio is filled with people that know you in a real way. We also know that there are tens of thousands who are searching and they don't know you and they don't have the answer and they don't know what is right. And this is their night to find reality. This is their time to make their decision and turn to you and their lives to be changed. This is the night that you're going to do miracles that only could be done Amen. in this very moment. Don't let anybody change this channel, but let your Holy Spirit keep them right there. Guide many others to call friends and call neighbors and tell them that they need to watch this program right now. God, we just pray that even those who are going across the dial will stop here by the providence and the divine destiny of God and that this will change their life. Holy Spirit, come among us and minister in a special way. Don't let any soul at all die and go to hell, but let every person get right with God and make their turn around now. We pray for that anointing to come, that special touch of the Holy Spirit. God, fill this place for the glory of the Lord right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we want the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus, to be exalted. And we now bind ourselves together in faith, and we agree that every evil spirit shall be cast forth, that every voice that is not the voice of God will be quiet, that every spirit that is not the Spirit of God will be under complete subjection. We now honor Jesus in every bit of this service and everything we can possibly do or say yes, yes. that your Holy Spirit yes, will not let a single soul be lost in the name of Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And all of God's people said amen. amen. Paul, I'm under a heavy burden tonight for some reason. Well, I know the reason. It's, it's the burden of souls. I know that's what it's for. So I just have to get to the word. I'll just have to take the liberty to say what God is saying, if you folks will allow me to do that. I just feel like there is nothing more urgent at this very instant than sharing a message that God spoke to me while I was on the plane from San Diego to come here to Phoenix. What I'm going to talk about is probably the most needed thing at this instant that America could hear because it is damning this nation. It is destroying churches. It is destroying families. It is destroying marriages. It is destroying relationships. It's something that God's Word talks about. In fact, if I may preface the whole message by saying this, that this is perhaps the sin that is going to send more people to hell than any other sin. And it's probably the most prevalent problem that's going on right now, even in churches and among leaders. And it's damning and destroying the purposes of God. You need to hear what God has spoken to my heart. And I want you, if you have a friend that you need to call, go to the phone right now and give them a call and tell them to tune to this channel and tell them that they need to hear what God is going to speak through a preacher. Because God anoints preachers. Thank God there are still some voices in America that will not compromise, that will not play games, but will preach the pure Word of God and will speak as prophets of God, even if it means not being very popular. But I'll tell you, friends, God is speaking, and you need to hear His voice. And if you will listen, I'm sure that there will be tens of thousands who will have their lives changed in the next 30 minutes. There are people sitting in this studio. This message is for you. It's going to prick hard. It's going to become pointed at times. It's going to get down, as they say, under the skin because it is going to stir you. 
But I pray that you will be man and woman enough to do something about it and be obedient to the Spirit because if you will, you will reap a mighty benefit from being obedient to God. Let me just say this before I read the Word. I've lived in the ministry most of my life. I started out as a young man in the ministry. I was raised in church. I was raised a PK, a preacher's kid. My dear mother still lives in Bakersfield. My father's gone on to be with the Lord, a dear saint of God who died early at 62 years of age. I was raised in the Word. I was raised in church. I was raised to live a godly and pure and holy and separated and clean life. I was raised to fear God. I was raised to respect the Word of God. I was, re I was raised to respect the church of God. And I think that I'm speaking to America and I'm speaking to most of you that were raised the same way. But Satan has come in in these days and he's brought about new value systems. He's brought about a new way of looking at things. He has come in and he has caused so much compromise that most people don't know what's black and what's white. In fact, they can't even distinguish the gray anymore. We're living in a day when people just do not know where they're at. But ladies and gentlemen, this word is still black and white. It's still yay and nay. It's still right down to the line, and it creates a, a value system, and it preaches a pattern, and it preaches something that, and teaches something that we must adhere to. And if we don't, we are going to pay the price. And multitudes today are paying the price because they have not believed that God would do what he said he would do in this word. Now let me tell you a story from the book of uh, Joshua. I won't take time to read the whole story. I wish you would in the whole seventh chapter of Joshua. But I'm going to skim through this story. It appears that this story is just another story of the conquest of the promised land by Israel. But it's more than that. There is one of the most phenomenal truths borne out in the story of Joshua conquering these two cities of Jericho and Ahai of any story in the Bible. It was an easy thing for them to conquer Jericho. As you know, they crossed the Jordan River, marched around the walls seven times, and the walls tumbled down, and they marched in and took the land. What a phenomenal miracle. We all love the story of the Jericho walls and Israel overcoming this city. But soon after that victory, things began to change. It wasn't the same after that. In fact, the next city was called Ai, A-I. And so when they went to conquer that city, they met and they said, there's no need to send a large army. It's just a small place. We'll send just a few thousand men. But you know what? This same army, these same phenomenal God called people under Joshua, went up to conquer Ahai, and they couldn't do it. In fact, they had to retreat, and they lost 36 men in the process. There was confusion. There was, there was unrest. What's wrong? And when they began to investigate, they found out that God revealed what was wrong. There was sin in the camp. There was one man called Achan, who when they had conquered Jericho, had taken the accursed thing. He had disobeyed the commandments of God. For when they took Jericho, the word from God was, you shall not take any of the silver or the gold, or you can't keep any of the spoil of this city because it is an accursed thing. And if you take this, when you take of the accursed thing, you will make the camp of Israel a curse and you will trouble it. Well, this is what had happened. One man called Achan thought he could play God. Oh, God won't do that. There won't be any problem if I take a little gold, a little silver. So he did, and he hid it in his tent. And this was the problem. This was what was wrong. And when they went to battle Ahai and take over one small city, they couldn't even get the victory because there was sin in the camp. There was an unconfessed sin in the heart of Achan. Today, I'm going to talk to you about that because I feel that in this audience and I feel that across America, 
the thing that is keeping the blessing of God from falling upon many churches and blessing many ministries and creating much havoc among your family is this covering up the unconfessed sins, the things that you are trying to play God with, that you are situation ethics involved in and you're trying to decide this is right, this is wrong, and you're not adhering to the pure word of God and the commandments of God, and you think that you can get by with it. But ladies and gentlemen, there's one thing that God will not overlook, and that is unconfessed sin. It must be confessed. This is what happened in this story. After they found that they could not conquer Ahi, and this tragedy had struck them, then God spoke to Joshua, and he found the man who had committed the sin. Skim through the seventh chapter with me and look at verse 5 and see the tragedy of what happened. And the men of Ahi smote of them about thirty and six men, for they chased them before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. This is God's church. This is God's army. This is God's chosen leader. And now there is nothing but complete confusion, and their hearts are melting within them, and they're troubled, and they have no confidence, and they have no faith, and the whole plan of God is being destroyed. Why? You see, it's not just the fact that you have an unconfessed sin. It's not just the fact that somebody in this room has an unconfessed sin. It's the fact that it's going to affect the whole camp. It's the fact that it's going to affect the whole church. It's the fact that it's going to affect the whole move of God. You say, how could that be true, Jerry Bernard? I'm just one little person. I'm just one man in the camp. I'm just one lady in the church. It's true because God has to have people confessing their sins Amen. in cover-up, in trying to whitewash it, in trying to make things go without coming God's way. God has to back off because if God continues to bless where there's sin, then God no longer is God. His whole word becomes a lie, and he himself becomes not a God, but he becomes one of it, the gods of the world. God must be true to himself. He cannot look upon sin. And if there's any sin whatsoever, until it's confessed and until it is brought before the Lord and washed away, God has to stand back and wait for that person to call out and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. Thirty-six people lost their lives because one man wouldn't confess a sin. How many souls, how many people have lost their lives because one person won't confess their sins? How many souls are tonight in hell because one father wouldn't confess his sins? One mother wouldn't confess her sins? How many children tonight are headed straight for hell and will not turn around unless some miracle of God reaches their heart simply because a parent would not confess a sin? How many churches are destroyed or in despair or in turmoil right this moment because one leader, one pastor, one staff member, one leader in that church will not confess their sins and come clean before God. I'm telling you, this message is not going to be a popular message, but it's burning in my spirit. It's tearing at me. It's calling me to preach. Lives are being lost. I've written a book entitled Something Worse Than Hell and Better Than Heaven. And in that book, I show that what is worse than hell is for someone who had the opportunity to serve God and they would not serve God. And they go to hell and then when they're in hell, they look around and they see their brother or their child or their wife. This is based upon the rich man in hell for when he saw that he could not get out of hell and he called out Abraham and said, get me out. Abraham said, I can't. Then he said, if you can't help me, then please send somebody to tell my five brothers not to come to this place. You talk about something worse than hell. 
Ladies and gentlemen, all the torment, all the pain, all the agony of hell will seem as nothing to know when you look down to the corridors of hell that your brother is there because you wouldn't serve God. Your wife is there because you wouldn't serve God. Your darling little child is there because you didn't have the backbone to confess your sins and serve God. I'm telling you, if there's anything that must be done tonight, it must be a mass repentance and we must come before God and if there's the slightest sin in our heart, we must confess it. <laughs> Lives are being lost. Thirty-six men were killed simply because one person coveted some gold and silver and hid it in his tent and wouldn't confess his sin before God. Not only that, all of the leadership was made of no value practically. Their leadership could not accomplish God's purpose because the whole plan of God was completely detoured. And all of the people lost hope. That's what it means in this verse when it said the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Do you know what it's like to walk around without hope? Do you know what it's like to feel like you can't accomplish anything you can't seem to get anywhere, and you wonder what's wrong. Why can't we get this done? Why won't this happen? And you begin to lose your hope. It's a hopeless situation. Your heart melts like wax. The entire people of Israel felt that way. And one person was making them of none effect because of his unconfessed sin. All Israel suffered because of one man. That's what this story proves. Even when the leadership prayed, it wasn't going to change it. They were crying out to God. They were doing their part. They were seeking God. Joshua went before God. Look at verse 7 as he calls out. Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us in the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? The confusion, the frustration. What's wrong? What's wrong? Why? Why, God? Have you ever walked your floor and said, Why, God? Have you ever cried out and said, Why, God? Nine times out of ten, it's probably because there's some sin in the camp. There's unconfessed sin somewhere. If not in your life, in someone else's life. It affects us all, ladies and gentlemen. The whole kingdom of God is at stake. The body of Christ is joined together. When one member suffers, we all suffer. When one person rejoices, we all rejoice. We're body of, we're all of one body. We're joined together by the mighty infilling of the Lord. We must realize we cannot go on with unconfessed sin in our life. Cannot. It has to be uncovered. It has to be confessed. It has to be brought before God so God can wash us clean and start all over again in our lives. And see, the tragedy of it all is this. In verse 8 and 9, as Joshua called out, he saw what the potential was. Oh, Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites... And all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us around and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? This is the tragedy. When there's unconfessed sin in the camp or in the heart of one individual, it gives the enemy a chance to progress. It gives the enemy the day they're hoping for. Let me tell you something, friends. The enemy is standing by like vultures. The enemy is standing by to gobble up the church of God. The enemy is standing by to say, I told you so. The enemy is standing by to blaze it in the headlines and to bring it to the public's attention. Oh, my God. God, if we could only realize there's a call of righteousness going out from the throne of God tonight. If there's any sin in your heart, confess it now. Oh, how many have thought that no one would ever find out. In this message, I'm now reminded of the most famous, perhaps, of all Bible characters, and I love him 
and that's David. David felt the same thing. He felt that his sin would never be revealed, that surely no one would ever know that he had sin. For when David was king, he walked out across his roof one night looking over the city, and he beheld a beautiful lady bathing herself. He said, I want this woman. He sent for Bathsheba, and she came to the palace. Her husband, Uriah the Hittite, was in David's army. He was away to war. David had a good time. He enjoyed his time with Bathsheba. Yes, sin was committed. The Bible tells all about it. He had his fun. He had his fling. But then the story goes on. A few months later, she sent word to David and said, David, I'm going to have a baby. I'm expecting a child. Then David knew he was trapped. Instead of confessing his sin then, and instead of calling out to God then, he began to connive a plan to cover up his sin. Oh, men and their cover-ups. Men and all of their strategy to try to get around God and God's word and God's righteousness. Let me tell you something, sir. Be sure your sin will find you out. There is no escape from God. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth. That shall he also reap. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap of the flesh corruption. I don't like to preach these kind of messages. I like to preach faith. I like to preach encouragement. But this is something that I've never preached before until tonight. God spoke it to my heart. America, it's either repent, it's either get before God and confess our sins, or we're going to see greater tragedy and greater problems than we've ever seen before. I know there are winds of revival. I know there are some sporadic moves here and there. And I know there's some glorious things happening, and I love to talk about them. But oh, what would happen tonight if all of across America, men and women would fall before God and say, God, I have a sin. Please forgive it. <laughs> That's what David tried to do. Cover it. In his cover-up, he brings Uriah, the young soldier, back from the war, and he tries to get Uriah to go home to spend a little time with his wife strategy. Oh, we're so smart. Because then when the baby is born, everybody will say it's nice. Uriah came home for a furlough. Now he and his wife are going to have a baby. But all the time Uriah was there, he wouldn't go home. He said, I can't go home to my wife when my buddies are dying on the battlefield. The man of God even made him drunk and tried to send him home. But even in his drunken stupor, he wouldn't leave. He slept on the doorstep there on the stairs in the palace. Finally, David is trapped. If the boy doesn't go home, how's he going to cover up his sin? Satan is there with his suggestions, and the suggestion is very subtle. Just send him out to a hot battle, a fierce battle, and he'll get killed. Then she'll be a widow. It's all proper for you to have Bathsheba, People will think it's great. You can marry the widow. Oh, yes. How many games have you played? How many strategies have you tried to pull? How many little things have you tried to cover up, my friend? How many little things that you think God knows nothing about and the preacher knows nothing about and surely it'll never be known? How many things have you tried? I'm telling you, God's given you a chance tonight to come clean. God's given you a chance to confess your sin before it's too late, before it goes any farther. Stop the cover-up. Stop the games. Don't do like David, because David did send the death warrant. He brought Uriah in and said, Take this message to Joab the commander. And sure enough, the message said, Put Uriah the Hittite in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. And here goes the young man back to the battlefield carrying his own death warrant and he didn't even know he had it in his pouch. 
and he hands this sealed message to his commander, and the commander reads it with tears in his eyes. Could this be my king? But he had to obey, and sure enough, the battle raged, and Uriah was killed. The cover-up is perfect, isn't it? <laughs> David marries Bathsheba. The baby is born, except for one thing. God had a prophet. His name was Nathan. God had somebody that heard what God was saying. Instead of being whitewashed and influenced, and Nathan came into the king's palace, and there before David, bringing a judgment that David thought was on somebody else, that he had to judge a matter of the land, David pronounced his judgment on this other case and said the man who has committed such a sin must die and must restore fourfold. And when he passed his judgment, Nathan stepped back and pointed at David and said, David, you're the man. You're the man. You're the man. There's a good ending to this story because David, when he saw that he had sinned, he confessed it. That's the difference. You should read his confession. I don't have time to read it, but the story is in 2 Samuel chapter 12 where you can read that story. But I would like to read the psalm that David wrote when he was trapped. Psalm 51 is his cry, is his prayer. At the time, Nathan has pointed his finger at David, and David knows that he is trapped, and his sin is now uncovered. He calls out, and here's what he prays. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Sir, are you big enough to do that? Ma'am, are you big enough to do that? Teenager, are you big enough to do that? Church member, are you big enough to do that? Preacher, deacon, Sunday school teacher, are you big enough to do that? In the trap of your sin when you know that it's wrong, are you big enough tonight to go before God and say, God, have mercy on me. Yes, I have sinned. My transgression is before me. When I go to bed at night, it's there. When I dream, it's there. When I walk, it's there. Where can I go to get away from it? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you where you can go to get away from it. It's called Calvary on an old Oh, rugged cross. <laughs> Hallelujah. Their hands are taken. <laughs> the blood that flowed from those nail prints and the blood that flowed from that spear wound is an atoning power for your sin. And no matter what you've done, it's a matter of believing upon Jesus Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. And that blood can make you ever with whole. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. How precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other count I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is what David did. He went to God and he said, Forgive my sin. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. And in verse 9 he calls out, Won't you do this? Won't you make this part of your prayer? Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. God is waiting for that call. God is waiting for that call. Yes, he forgave David. Oh, David had to pay. Oh, yes, he had to pay. He lost the child. The child died. He had to suffer. 
for you reap what you sow. And it came out in his children. It came out in his wives. It came out in his family. And some of those things that some of you are suffering today is a matter of reaping some of the things that you have sown. That's why if you're in your teens or you're younger than that, maybe you're 8 or 9 or 10, if you'll accept Jesus right now, you'll save yourself a whirlwind of trouble. Your life will be a lot better off. You'll not only save yourself from all of the future with all of its horrible things, but you can save yourself now and you won't be reaping some of the things. I counsel people as a pastor, and ladies and gentlemen, there are some things that I cannot change in their life because they're reaping. There are some things that I cannot, I, I cannot change it because they've already cast the die. They've already lived their life. Oh, yes, God forgives, but you also have to reap what you sow. Don't mock God. Don't play with God. Confess the sin now and see what will happen. There are phone numbers on the screen that you can call even at this minute. And there are people ready to help you at any time if the Holy Spirit is prompting you. You don't have to wait. You can go to that phone. If the Holy Spirit is saying, get saved, get right, have somebody pray with you, then you can go to that phone and you can call. Because there's someone there that loves you. And there's someone there that will minister love to you. And you can come out of your sin. You can, but you have to confess that sin. You have to acknowledge the fact that you've sinned because you cannot have God's forgiveness until you come to Him and confess your sin. You say, do you base that upon the Word of God? Absolutely. The Word of God is filled with the truth that you must confess it. And perhaps the most classic example and the most beautiful teaching is in Romans 10, 9 and 10 where the Scripture says that you must believe in your heart upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And you must confess with your mouth. You must, Jesus in His teachings, when He said it in Matthew 10, 32, you must confess me before men, because if you will confess me before men, I will confess you before the Father. There must be a confession. There must be an acknowledgement of sin. There must be a confrontation with the things that are going on in your life. And when you do that, and you come before God, God will forgive. What happened to Achan? Let me finish this story in Joshua. What happened to Achan? You know the story. He was confronted with his sin, but see, he did not confess it. He had to be brought to judgment because he wouldn't confess. He had to be brought before God and the judgment was passed that anybody that had done what he did had to be stoned and put to death. Aren't you glad that God doesn't deal with things like that now? Aren't you glad that God doesn't come in judgment now and destroy and wipe out? Achan, his family, and everything he had had to be judged, and he was taken out, and all Israel stoned him, and they left their bodies there with the stones as a memorial so that people would know that God is a righteous God and God cannot be tampered with. You say, is God a good God? Absolutely. God is a good God. You see, that's an Old Testament story. We're under the grace of God right now and Calvary is here. But that was a specific case where there was, an, there was a pre-announced uh, judgment that if anybody did keep anything that was accursed, they would have to pay that penalty. He knew that in advance, and he went ahead and did it anyhow, and he tried to cover up his sin by hiding all of his goods in the tent. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is your night to confess your sin. If, in fact, you will be willing to come before God and say, God, I've sinned. I believe that all of heaven will stop, and all of the choirs of heaven will stop, and every ear of heaven will bend down and there will be a quiet time as you call out upon the Lord. And then once you have made your call and once you have confessed your sin, I believe all heaven will break out in rejoicing and there will be more rejoicing in heaven because you've come home than there will be here in this studio tonight over everybody that feels like everything's all right with God. God wants you, my friend, that one sinner that one lost soul, that one unconfessed sin that is hiding in your heart, God wants that uncovered right now. That one unconfessed sin in this studio, God wants that uncovered right now. You know about it. I don't know about it, but you know about it. 
You know about it. You know what's in your heart. You know what's in your spirit. You know what's in your mind. And you know what God wants from you. And I believe right now that if every man, woman, boy, and girl that the Holy Spirit has spoken to about unconfessed sin will just take a moment and say, Father, forgive me. I'm coming home. I believe that all of heaven will break out in rejoicing. And the souls that are brought to God will be because confession is made. And when the confession is made, God will listen. There's an old hymn, and I want the organist to play it. It says, Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. O Lamb of God, I come. You say, if I could just get better, Jerry, if I could just work this out, if I could just solve this one problem, then I'm going to turn to God. That's why you're in so deep now. You've been trying to solve it. And all you've done is made it worse. It's piled up. It's magnified a thousand times until now you're caught in a prison. You're ensnared. And you don't know how to get out. But I've given you a way out by confessing your sin. If, in fact, you will confess your sin, God will forgive you. I'm going to pray a prayer, and I want you to pray it with me right now. I want us all to pray this prayer. We're going to confess publicly, and then we're going to go to the phones, and you can call individually and see what will happen in your life. But right now, let's pray this prayer publicly before God and not be ashamed to ask God's help as we call out for His forgiveness. Pray it out loud. Dear God, I know that I've sinned and I have to be forgiven. I know that Jesus Christ has died for my forgiveness. You will accept me because of Jesus Christ. Forgive me for my sin, for my covering up, for my trying to hide it, for my trying to play games. I'm coming before you now and I'm confessing my sin. Forgive me now and blot out my iniquity for I am sorry for my sins. Now go to the phone. Some of you that are watching at home need to go to that phone. You need to call. That's how you can do it. That's how you can make a public confession. That's how you can make it. Don't hesitate. Don't say some other day. Don't say a more convenient time. Don't say tomorrow. You may not see tomorrow. You say, Jerry Bernard, are you trying to scare me? If I thought scaring you would get you saved, yes. Yes. I'm just telling the truth, though. You don't know what tomorrow holds. And now is the time. God is speaking to you now. And you need to go to your telephone. Whatever telephone number is on your screen in your city, call it right now. If there is no local telephone number, call whatever number is on the screen. And if the price of the long-distance call is a barrier, then call Collect if you really sincerely want a prayer partner to pray with you. You need somebody to pray with you. Some of you can't do it alone. You don't have to go into a long, drawn-out affair and say, I've done this and this and this. You just say, pray with me. I need somebody to pray with me. I know I've sinned. And if you have prayed already, now call in and let us know. Give us your name. Let us know the city that you're in so that we can rejoice with you, so that we can know that the sins have been forgiven because you have asked God to forgive you. You must make a move. You must make a move. You can't hold back now. Go to that telephone. Don't miss this moment. People in this studio, the Holy Spirit is doing a work. And I want you to be honest before God. 
And if there is the slightest unconfessed sin in your life right now, I'm asking you, if you haven't already prayed, to do it. I believe you've done it, though. I've seen, I've seen many of you praying. And I've seen some of you wiping the tears. It matters not what you've done. God is saying, come unto me and I will forgive you. But you must confess your sins before the Lord. If you don't confess them, he can't forgive them. You must confess your sins before the Lord. All right, I feel the Holy Spirit has delivered what was in my heart from him. It's not the sermon of the month that I was trying to preach. It was a message that I had to bring for this moment. And now respond and let the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit complete the work in your heart and in your life. Paul, I just don't know any more to do except let the Holy Spirit deal with people because I am Jerry, just so moved in my heart. I feel so strongly right now. In fact, the Holy Spirit spoke to me just this moment. It seems like we come to this moment so often and in a, in a sense we feel so helpless. We've done, in a sense, all we know to do. You've proclaimed the word as faithfully and as truly as I've ever heard you proclaim it, Jerry. And we need this message. Don't ever apologize for preaching this kind of a message. America needs this probably more at this time than at any other time in the history of our nation. If we ever expect our nation to really go forward and be the great lighthouse that God intended her to be, we've got to have this kind of preaching. So we say thank you, Jerry. We do. But I heard the Holy Spirit speak in my heart, and I think there's one other thing we can do. And I want everyone, everybody to join hands right now and be in agreement with your fellow believer right beside you there. We can preach the word. We can sing the word. We can do everything God tells us to do. But when we reach this moment, only the Holy Spirit can convict and convince men and women that it is the truth and it is what they need and then motivate them to do what this preacher of the word has admonished us to do. I want us to pray a prayer now and ask the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a beautiful, wonderful person. The Holy Spirit is not an it, it's a him. Yes. He is the one now who will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment oh. to come. And so let's do some serious business right now because God has entrusted to you, his church now, the authority to do spiritual battle now in the spirit of the living God. Let's agree right now. Father God, hallelujah. We loose now the precious Holy Spirit of God to breathe across America, to touch men and women, to convict them of sin, to grip them in their spirits, we pray right now. Oh God, do now that that we cannot do and convince men and women that this word that they have heard is the truth of God. And then, Lord, with love and with mercy and with cords of love, draw every erring child of God, every lost sinner that has never received you, every one that is outside the ark of your safety, draw them now, we pray, in Jesus' name. Oh, we agree <laughs> upon this right now. Let the cries of repentance be heard throughout our land, we pray. Let men and women mourn between the porch and the altar. Let the priests of God cry out to you for mercy. Let everyone that has heard this word tonight bring forth fruits of repentance, we pray, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, it would be so easy for us to blame the condition of our land upon our government or upon the Supreme Court or upon someone else and make a scapegoat. But, oh, God, let the church of Jesus Christ realize that judgment must always begin at the house of God. Oh, God, forgive us, your people. For your word declares, if my people will call upon me and repent. I'll heal their land. Not if the sinner, but if my people will call upon me. God, we call upon you now and we ask you to forgive us and to cleanse us that we might be that mighty witness that you have called us to be. 
And now, in Jesus' name, we bind the power of the enemy. Satan, you will loose men and women from the bondage of sin. We break the chains of bondage, of dope addiction, of cigarettes and tobacco, of sin of every kind. We break it in Jesus' name and agree that men and women are loosed now by the power of the Holy Spirit from every bondage of sin that Satan has contrived. We agree upon it now and we call it done in the name of Jesus. And all the church said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my. I know this. That if somehow, some way, God could just draw back the curtain and we could see into the spirit world. Jerry, <laughs> I believe we'd see hand-to-hand -hand combat. I believe old Michael is up there with a host of, of the heavenly host. And they're doing what we have just commanded to be done. They're binding evil principalities and powers. In Jesus' name, your loved one is free. Hallelujah. You've prayed for them for 40 years. They're free in Jesus' name right now. Hallelujah. Those of you that prayed that prayer with Jerry Bernard a moment ago, you're free. You're free. You feel the loosening of those chains. Now do the next thing God's Word says to do. Confess with your mouth. Oh, yeah the Lord Jesus Christ. Speak it forth. Tell someone, I'm changing sides. Hallelujah. Honey, what's happening in the little delivery room? In Brooklyn, New York, Brooklyn. there is sitting a beautiful girl, 23 years old, that was oh, contemplating Jesus. suicide tonight. Mm. But there was a light mm. at the end of her darkness. <laughs> her Savior, Lord, Jerry. Right, Here's right. Ellenville, New York, 16 years old. Here's from Hawaii, Iva Beach, E-I-V-A Beach, Hawaii, 20 Praise years God. old. Hallelujah. Robert from Danbury, Connecticut. Here's Wartbury, New York, 23 years old. Newburgh, New York. Highland, New York, 75 Glory. years old. Poughkeepsie, New York. The Bronx, New York. Ellenville, New York. Newburgh, New York. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. All right. <laughs> Ada, Oklahoma. Ada. Las Vegas, Nevada, Richmond, Virginia, Taylor, Michigan, Fort Lauderdale, North Las Vegas. Ha ha, devil. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Excuse me. <laughs> Amen. 28 years old, Beth from Miami, 14. George from somewhere in Florida, Jay from Fort Lauderdale, Paige from Plantasia, Margate, City and Rosalie, my goodness, there's Florence from Cincinnati, Ohio, Juan from Fort Lauderdale, Kimberly from Miami, Leonard from Oklahoma City, Carol from L.A., Diane from San Jose, Antoinette from Roland Heights, nine years old, praise God, John from Anaheim, David from L.A., Diane from Granada Hills, Eric from Arlita, Alberta, from Rialto, 83 yeah. years young. <laughs> Kathy from Long Beach, 39. All receiving Jesus. Welcome to Hi, we've just begun. Bob from Franklin, Indiana, 18. Boyd from Phoenix, Arizona. Bertha from Phoenix. He's just home on leave, oh, watching yes. right now. He's in the Army, and he was watching from Franklin, Indiana, 18 years young, and said, I've got to get my sins forgiven. <laughs> That's Lord. it, Rob. Praise God. Tony from Phoenix, Evelyn from Lebanon, Ohio, Jerry from Los Angeles, Thelma from Poughkeepsie, New York, Dorwin from Mesa, Arizona, Sonia from Oklahoma City, Effie from Tempe, Nell from Phoenix, Glendale, Phoenix, Phoenix, all of Phoenix is getting saved tonight. Praise God, praise God. Phoenix and all the cities around and about, and still they're coming. You know, Joe Baez sings a beautiful song, Jerry, that says so beautifully what you have said tonight. There is a balm in Gilead that will heal the sin-sick soul. I love what Dwight Thompson said last night. God's not mad at anybody. He's not mad at you. But he does require what this preacher has just said. He that covereth his sin will not prosper. But if we confess our sin, 
He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He loves you so much. I just believe somebody got saved in this audience tonight. I just feel it. Is it is anybody received Christ? Young man, I see your hand over there. God bless you. I, I just knew the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me that somebody had received Christ. Welcome into the family of Jesus Christ. We love you. And Jesus loves you. A beautiful young man in this audience prayed with you, Jerry. And we have a new brother in the Lord tonight. Oh, praise God. There Joe? Many others that, there are many others in the audience that prayed that had some unconfessed sin yes. in their life. And they know, and God knows, and that's what counts. You see, a lot of us are church people. A lot of us are what we call known to be serving the Lord, but there's things inside. And that's just as bad as the person that's an out-and-out -out sinner. Because any sin, if it's unconfessed, will keep you from God. Amen. Amen. The thing you must do now is tell someone. Move quickly to a phone. We love you to tell us, of course, because we want to send you a Bible if you need one, and we'll ask for it. A new birth certificate, some other Christian literature that will be a blessing to you if you will just call right now. Beautiful prayer partners are standing by on the phones. If you get a busy signal, please dial again. We'll stay by these telephones as long as they ring to tell you the love of God and to hear your beautiful confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's tell Joe Bai as we love him tonight as he sings and you call about this healing balm that God has for you.
Sorry. Uh, thank you, Joe. Joe Baez, we're going to continue. We're going to stay with you for a little while, give you a chance to make that beautiful decision for faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to stay on as long as we need to that you may call in. We have a very wonderful friend that has just dropped by, and if Jan will bring him up here, we want him to just say a little word of greeting to you and a little blessing. You know, uh, a little earlier this evening, Jan indicated that we... Uh, announced that the world's greatest preacher was going to be here tonight. So uh, uh, Jerry Bernard showed up, uh, Roger McDuff, uh, Dan Schaefer, uh, Dwight Thompson, and of course, Pastor Richard Jackson heard that announcement, so he felt honor-bound to show up. Let's tell him welcome to praise the Lord. Hey, how's my bad nerve? How are you doing, Paul? You're doing great. I, uh, welcome. I know I wasn't invited this week, or I, I thought you didn't want me to preach, and then I heard the world's greatest preacher is going to be here, and my, and my humility just made me show up. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How long did we call you? We, you were the first one we called to take one night this week, and his son just graduated from law school. Yeah, he had so a good they excuse. just got back, but we invited you first, Pastor. Tell Thank them. you, Jan. Tell him we did. Whatever you say, Jan. <laughs> Whatever you say. I have never argued with this woman, and I don't intend to now. You can. No, I won't. <laughs> well, you're having a great week. I, I was uh, able to watch uh, last night. It's the first night we were in town and able to watch, and it was uh, a delight. And uh, I even enjoyed hearing Dwight preach. That old boy, keeps he keeps working at it. He's going to get good. You know it. <laughs> How's everybody at North Phoenix Baptist? Doing, everybody's doing fine. It's the best pastorless church in America. Really? Yeah, they do better without a preacher than anybody I know. Oh. <laughs> now you're being too much. No, it's, uh, it's really what the church is, I think, everywhere where it really is functions and what it ought to be is it's, you know, we understand that everybody in the church is a minister, and my calling is different but not superior, and when all of the saints are ministering, then God's going to be honored and the lost are going to be saved and we're going to be blessed. And uh, so I'm just thrilled to be along for the ride. I, I kind of feel like a glorified cheerleader. If I'll just stand around and point them in a direction, get out of the way, they'll go there. And uh, they're doing a great job. And it's a joy to be with you all tonight. It sure is. Pastor Jackson, stay right here. Jerry, Roger, everybody come. We're just going to have a beautiful season of prayer as we get ready to take a brief little station break, but we're going to come right back and continue to pull in the net. Praise the Lord for the souls that are coming to him. Honey, get, gather up all the prayer needs and let's have Jerry lead us as we believe God for miracles tonight. In fact, we're going to pray specially for Pastor Jackson. He had a little accident, hurt his shoulder, and uh, did a little bit of damage. He's in pain tonight, I understand. Well, Jesus can take care of that. And we're going to agree with him that God will just touch that shoulder, make it every whit whole. How many believe God can Hallelujah. heal preachers as well as laymen? I know he can. Amen. Praise God. Pastor Schaefer, share some of the prayer needs. Will you with me? Or let, let me have them here. Right. Jan, help me hold them over here. Calls are coming in from all over America tonight. Many urgent, urgent needs. Many need the touch of Jesus. <laughs> Share just a few of them, would you please? And then Jerry's going to lead us, and we're going to believe God for miracles. From Glendale, a husband has an alcoholic problem. They're asking for prayer from Phoenix. Just need healing in the body. Another one from Phoenix, a husband has suicidal tendencies, and they're asking for a miracle. Amen. From Mesa, someone has the flu tonight. So many. Jerry, just lead us, and let's believe God together. Father, we lift up every request before you. We know that they've already been lifted up before you because the moment the call was made, it became evident. In fact, even before then, you knew the intents and the thoughts of the heart. But you said we had to make our request known. And so in doing so, that's faith. So in that faith, we know that the answer is already on the way. And we praise you now for touching every need every person and we vow to give you all the glory for the good that is done for we ask it in jesus name and everyone said amen amen amen, amen. praise god praise god and everybody that believes god heard that prayer well give him a praise offering a great ovation roger i know you've sung it twice before tonight but i just feel like you ought to sing it one more time God is bigger than any mountain. I don't care what that mountain is the old enemy has put in your way. 
God can take it out of the way. Whosoever shall say to that mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, he shall have whatsoever he wishes for. No. 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 He shall have whatsoever he complains for. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Saith. If you need something from the Lord tonight, declare it. Speak to that mountain. You know, the biggest mistake we as Christians make, we go around asking God to move the mountains for us. We cry out, God, you do it. You move this mountain. You take care. You No, God said, you go do it in my name. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Let's do some saying tonight. Praise God. Tell Roger McDuff one more time you love him as he sings bigger than any mountain. Oh. has found out that those mountains in the presence of God are nothing. Many of us, we get caught up with the mountain and involved in looking at the mountain and we fail to look beyond the mountain and beyond the mountain is Jesus. We look at the problem and we don't see the problem solver and his name is Jesus. So if you've got a mountain in your life out there, just know that there's a body of believers right here in this studio and all across America that's believing with you and whatever your problem might be, you lay your hand on that sickness wherever it is in your body and if there's somebody in the bedroom, go back there in the bedroom and lay your hand on them while we're singing and ministering for the next hour. Turn me on, bigger. Then any mountain will bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears. God is bigger than any mountain that I can cannot see. Yeah. Bigger than all my questions, bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain that I can cannot see. He's bigger than all the shadows. That fall across my path, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my confusion, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Praise God for the wonderful things that are happening. Roger, I want you to know that people are calling in. Here's Barbara from Houston who's just called in to receive Jesus Christ. 
from uh, Buford, Indiana, 16 from, years old. Fred, I came from Christ. Houston, Texas today, and that is somebody all the way back in Houston finding Jesus tonight. And Fantastic. that was Fantastic. You know, Jerry, see, I have longed for so long to see this happen, but here it is from Houston, Texas. <laughs> it is breaking through back in Houston. Hallelujah. And here's a call from Danbury, Connecticut. Ollie's getting saved. And here's from Pennsylvania, Morristown. Alice is getting saved. New York City. Joyce is getting saved. New York City. There are many of you that haven't called Hallelujah. in yet. The Holy Spirit Hallelujah. has been pleading now Hallelujah. for the last uh, 30 minutes or more. Hallelujah. And some of you that have just tuned across the dial, you may not know exactly what's going on, but the Holy Spirit spoke and said, we cannot go through life with unconfessed sin. Hallelujah. We must confess those sins Amen. unto the Lord. Amen. So go to the phones and make that call. And if you called a while ago and the line was busy, call again and make your peace with God. Don't let this day end Hallelujah. with that sin in your life. Amen. Make that call and let's get right with God. Let things happen in your life. And I know that if you'll make the call, things can happen because you're doing what God tells you to do. Let's go to the phones right now and get those calls in. Jay, bring these in. Here's some more. Here's another handful of calls. Oh, praise God, look at this. Hold this just a minute. Here is Max in Dallas, Texas, getting saved, calling out to God. Hallelujah. Here is Sherry from Indiana, Winchester. Keith from Santa Monica, California. Gerald from Phoenix, Arizona. Loretta from Compton, California. Here's another call from Los Angeles, from Phoenix, from Clovis, California, from Middleton, Ohio, from Westminster, Colorado. Hallelujah. From uh, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, from New Hall, California, Los Angeles, all over Arizona. Calls are coming in. Denver, Colorado, Waterbury, Connecticut. Dayton, Ohio. Hallelujah. People, let's go and see what God will do Hallelujah. by making that call. And God will honor his word if you will make that call and Hallelujah. say, I need to know Jesus as my Savior, and great things will happen in your life. Hallelujah. Roger, share a couple more, and I'm going to go over and sing a song for the folks. I've had so many requests, and I haven't been able to get to all of those songs because the word had to come first. But I am going to sing at least one or two of them, and this is one that I just love to sing. So you get a couple more reports in, and I'll get ready to sing. And if you folks want to stay around a little while, we're going to have some church Hallelujah. around here. All right? All right? Hallelujah. Here is some of the reports, and some more brand new reports. This is from Phoenix, Arizona, and this was... This, this is a young man that was in the audience a while ago that gave his heart to Jesus. He's 18 years old, and he's right here from Phoenix, and he received Jesus Christ right here in this studio. Thank God for what's happening in this place tonight. And you know what? All of us together, you know, when we first came in the studio tonight, some of the people met with me around, and they said, Hey, we're praying for you. We love you. We're praying for you. That was happening before we went on the air tonight, and we're all seeing the results of what our prayers and the ministry through Jerry has brought forth. Here's someone from Phoenix, Arizona, and there was someone who got saved, and there's more of them. There's more that Jerry didn't read. We're going to be sharing more. Pick up the phone and call. Jerry's going to sing the song that he's told us about in so many requests already this evening for Jerry to sing, and he says, He keeps lifting me higher and higher, I guess. Is that the way it is? <laughs> there, turn him on. Jerry. Facing decisions and answers unknown, a valley with no end inside. But I stepped out on faith, believe that I soon would be received. What he promised to make of my life. He lifts us up.
but never forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. He lifts us up higher. of this world did not meet the need but when God's love finally touched you it lifted you out of your sin and it keeps lifting you higher and higher and higher so high soon we'll be whole so high soon we'll be just going to keep music rolling right on and there's someone who's come a number of times and said Jerry has got to sing the song it's real it's real and Jerry how many of you believe that believe that. okay all right Jerry's got to sing it's real it's real you know the songs uh, what we're seeing today Betty Jean is the author of a lot of the songs that you're enjoying at home the song Jehovah which you've heard sung by so many, and Brother Copeland has recorded it, and I was listening to Brother Copeland all the way to the TV station tonight as he was talking about the ministry of music that's coming forth in these last days, like the psalmist David, and how that it seems like that music as never before is, is a beginning of ministry, that in the five-fold ministry, seeing that music is coming into its own position, into the strong ministries, and I'm seeing this. Betty and Joe and myself are out in your churches and we're in your cities and we're singing in the auditoriums and we're in the crusades and going in the jail services and we're working behind the scenes in a lot of places and having the opportunity to sing and see the effects of music. And Betty, I want you to just tell just for a moment some of the things that God has been speaking to you. And we talked about this the other day when we was on the Roger program. And what is happening to you as you're beginning to write and, and the new songs that are coming as we were talking to Dottie Rambo and Dottie began to just speak the words to some of the songs and she began to weep because she said, Roger, I have never written with such depth and it seems to be coming as never before because of the revival that's in the Word. Yes. Uh, you know, Roger, the, the Lord, some of the songs that he's been giving me is, um, it's like, um, you know, I used to write country songs and they just came from my soulish nature and my mind and all, but... Um, in the last year or two, um, songs like He is Jehovah and to the glory of God my Father. Yes. It's like the Holy Spirit, you just almost just bow down with your face on the floor Hallelujah. and praise to Him and just begin to magnify Him. <laughs> and so He just communicates with our spirit. And, and uh, uh, I know I enjoyed jo Joe a while ago and just feeling the sweet spirit of the Lord. And, uh, and God is anointing His mm -hmm. Uh, singers and I praise God for that well here's what's happening right here is a little girl from uh, Orlando Florida that's just given their heart to the Lord Phoenix Arizona and here is someone from Glendale Arizona someone from Phoenix Arizona finding Jesus age 16 age 53 where's that from Rosenberg Texas my, 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 Rosenberg, Texas. Here's someone that was 53 years old. God bless you. You're the fur piece from where we are tonight, but God bless you watching. And here's someone from Phoenix, Arizona, 21 years old, finding Jesus. Someone else from Canton, Ohio. Name is Rose, 57 years old. Here is Ruby, and she is from Miami, Florida, finding Jesus Christ. Here's a praise report. Joe, we have someone from Los Angeles, California, 77 years young. Hallelujah. Finding Jesus true to the heart. Well, let's give the God that we serve a great big praise for these beautiful things, and we're seeing them all down here. Joe, what's bubbling in your heart? 
Roger, I think probably the most sincere thing I could say is that it's, it's important that we don't take it for granted. The blessings are happening. The Lord is moving, and it's tremendous what's happening through Christian television. But we can't take it for granted. It's not us that are making this thing happen. It's the Spirit of the Lord, and He's working through us. Amen. And it's our willingness to be used that makes it possible for Him to work. I don't want anybody to think that they can get their eyes on TBN or on Roger or on Betty Jean or any of us and think that by our own power we can do anything. But through the Jesus. Spirit of God oh, yeah. and the power of God, all things are possible Hallelujah. if we only believe. Hallelujah. There are people, I'm sure, who are sitting out here tonight who are probably doubting everything that's going on here. You think it's some kind of show and you think it's all put together? Because I used to sit where you're sitting. And I'd see all these things happening, and I'd think, oh, you know, that's not really real. Those guys get on there and sing, and they don't live that stuff they sing about. Those folks get on there and preach, they don't live that stuff they preach about. Well, I'm here to tell you that the Spirit of God is alive Hallelujah. in this man's heart. Hallelujah. You know, doesn't mean I'm perfect, but the perfect one lives in me. Amen. And what we do here, we do out of a sincere heart, that God may be lifted up, <laughs> that you may be blessed. And that's the only reason for doing it, that God can shine forth and be Hallelujah. glorified. So we don't want to take it for granted that we're doing anything special, but God is our source, and he's yours too. Jerry sang it in song, and it was written a long, long time ago, but the message is still true. Andre Crouch said it. He said it happened a long, long time ago, and here's Jerry saying, it's real, it's real, I know, thank God it's real. Welcome, Jerry. Sing it, Jerry. I'll tell you, I, I just never saw such wonderful people in Phoenix. You are fantastic. Richard Jackson, you must be blessed of God to be able to pastor in such a beautiful city. These folks are always so exciting over here. Well, I've got news for you. I'm not uh, coming back Sunday night to be with Richard Jackson, but sometime I will. But I am coming back over Sunday night to be at Sweetwater Church of the Valley with uh, Glenn Foster. So I can see you there. And uh, I love you people here in Phoenix. You're always so receptive. It just seems like some of the greatest churches in the nation are in this whole valley, like Brother Jackson's and Brother Foster's and Brother Price's, and I, I, I missed them all. There's just so many, I can't even name them all. Such a gathering of people that are here. And you know what I'm seeing happen here in the Valley of the Sun and in California is a unity. People are coming together. And whether we're Baptists or Pentecostal or Charismatic or Presbyterian or Lutheran, we're getting together. We're loving one another. We're sharing in this wonderful ministry. And we're all one in Christ Jesus. And you see, that's the way it should be. and That's the way it is. Now, I was raised in Pentecost, and I, I'm glad for my heritage. I was raised by godly parents beautiful old-time Pentecostal saints of God who loved Jesus with all of their heart. And I have that heritage, and I'm glad for it. I went through my doubts about the power of Pentecost and the manifestations, but the doubts are all settled. I found in God's Word that it's there and it's for us. And the song that I'm sharing with you is about 60 years old. It was written, I guess, in a brush arbor meeting, but it's just like it was written at... Uh, TV and studios <laughs> because it just keeps going on year after year, week after week. It's real. It's real. When first I heard of Pentecost, thought it was a shame. Such unholy teaching would be taught in Jesus' name. They said it was in the Bible. Now I did not want to doubt, so I went around to see them, to hear them sing and shout. Yes, it's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. I know it's real. This Pentecostal blessing. I know, I know it's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. Some were prostrate on the floor. Some were dancing in the spirit from the pulpit to the door. They were quaking and shaking as one by one they fell. 
When all at once a brother shook, man, I thought he had a spell. It's real, it's real, it's real. In the Pentecostal way For oh, just a day or two ago I heard my father say Huh, son, when I got my religion I'll tell you, I sure didn't act that way It's real, it's real I know, I know, I know, I know It's Pentecostal blessing I know, I know it's real It's real, it's real release of the blessed Holy Spirit in your life, go right ahead and do it. Let the Holy Spirit have right of way in your life right now. You see, the same Holy Spirit that came into your life when you receive Jesus Christ wants to gain complete control. You cannot have salvation without having the Holy Spirit in your life. So what you need to do is to yield more and say, all right, total complete control is what I'm going to give the Holy Spirit for he is now in my life. You say, Jerry, but what about some of the manifestations? Well, what about them? My, look, if, if God wants to give you some of those things that are written in the Bible, go ahead and take them. And then if you get to heaven and he says you didn't need them, well, then all you can do is apologize. Go ahead. All right. Look, folks. God is doing too many great things with too many people. It used to be there was only a few people down by the railroad tracks in a little rumble-down shack that were letting the Holy Spirit gifts operate, but now it's in every major denomination, every major church, 
It's happening worldwide. So if the Holy Spirit and the manifestations of the Spirit are moving like they are among millions, why not just open up your heart and say, All right, Holy Spirit, flow through me. What do you want to do through me? What work, what gift do you want to manifest through me? Of course, the priority is the fruit of the Spirit. You must make that the priority. For the fruit of the Spirit is more important than anything. But don't miss the gifts. The Holy Spirit is a dove. And I think of the Holy Spirit is the body of the dove and the fruit of the Spirit is one wing and the gifts of the Spirit is the other wing. And when you've got both wings there, you have balance. But when you only have one wing, you're overbalanced. So go ahead and have the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit and let God use you in His beautiful way. All right? Open up and let the Holy Spirit have His way in your heart. Oh, praise God. Phoenix, I'm glad I'm coming back here Sunday night. We're going to have a time. We're going to have a time. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a time. I hope I just see the Holy Spirit move in this sun valley like it's never moved before. And I'm looking forward to that. For those of you that are in the Phoenix area, I'll be with Glenn Foster there at the Sweetwater Church of the Valley this Sunday night. And I just hope that you'll come ready and just let God do something special in your heart, okay? And be ready for it. Betty Jean's going to sing for us right now. I didn't know that this was the same song that Betty had written. I've heard so many people sing it, and it's one of the greatest songs. Oh, I love this song. Betty, come on over here right now and sing that song. This is so fantastic. If you haven't heard this song, in fact, can I get the track from you so I can start singing it? I don't have a track for it. I didn't realize I've heard everybody singing, He is Jehovah, but then it dawned on me, the title, and it was the same one that God gave you a few years ago. You probably wondered, how can anybody from Strike Creek, Kentucky, right? He is Jehovah. No, I never wondered that because the Holy Spirit is everywhere. I know how he uses you. <laughs> Betty Jean Robinson singing, He is Jehovah. <laughs> he is Jehovah, God of creation. He is Jehovah, Lord God. rock of ages. He is Jehovah, the God that healeth thee. I am the great I am, the God of Abraham. Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. I am the God of Israel, the everlasting arms. I am Jehovah, the God that healeth thee. Sing hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can see all of these beautiful white slips down here on the floor, and we're going to read you more that's in our hand. These are people that are finding out that this that has been preached and sung and testifying from this platform, these others are finding the same truth that it's real, it's real, it's real. Pastor has something. He's sitting over to the sidelines, and he's getting all fired up, and he just had to say something. Roger, I, I just wanted to say I've always wanted to be present when Jerry sang that song. I've seen it on television a lot of times. And uh, I've always wanted to be there to share in the excitement that he has in that song. And I'll tell you what uh, somebody said to me one time. A lady said to me, she said, why do you preach so loud? And uh, she was watching on television. I said, well, there's a button on there you can turn down, you know. And uh, then I said to her, I said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, do you always believe everything I say? She said, no, I don't. But I said, do you ever doubt whether I believe it or not? She said, no, I don't. So I've heard Jerry Wayne sing that song enough. I don't doubt that he believes it. I can tell you that for sure. And Betty Jean, Betty Jean, can you hear me? I, I, I don't know if you've heard this or not before, Betty Jean, but you have given birth to a brand new kind of music, country Jewish. Okay? <laughs> that's, that's what I hear in that song, Jehovah. So that, if, if you can have country Jewish from West Virginia. Is that, where, no, Kentucky. You're from Kentucky. I don't know if any Jewish people live in Kentucky or not, Betty Jean, but praise the Lord, you got it all together for our, for our Jewish friends and our country friends. Country Jewish. That's, you better write some more songs in there. I got some kin folks, and one of them's named Abraham. <laughs> one of them's named Abraham, all right. Well, well, you can do that, huh? Well, thank you for the privilege of being here, and praise the Lord for all these people getting saved. And Roger, I know there's going to be a lot more before this hour is ended. Oh, it's, and, it's uh, not over with yet, Pastor. No, it's no. not over with yet. And if you're out there and you've not made your call, you might join in with all of these that have made their call. I think Joe is getting ready to sing for us. But let me tell you, here is Ruth from Ontario, California, who has found Jesus. And uh, who is this here? This is Rebecca, and she is from San Pedro, California. She's 18 or 16 years old. And here is someone from Bakerfield, 40 years old, Bakersfield, California. Someone from L.A., 16 years old. Here's someone from, uh, uh, this is, seems like this is out of Missouri. This is Richard out of Missouri somewhere who has found Jesus. Someone out of L.A. Here's someone out of uh, uh, Oakland. Uh, and uh, that is Bob, 23 years old. And here is somebody out of Rushville, Colorado, I would suppose that is, and that's Frank, 13 years old. Here is Jesse, 17 years old, and this is out of the state of Illinois. And here is Don, and this is out of Richmond, and I would imagine that's Richmond, Indiana. And uh, here is someone from Hamilton, Ohio. See up there in Hamilton, Ohio, folks up there still watching television this time of night. Here's someone else from Ohio. This is Mary, and she's from Ohio, and this is uh, Olivia. 56 years old, and she is from Oklahoma. And here is Phyllis, 27 years old, and she is from Oklahoma. And uh, Lena from Miami, 21 years old. And here is someone from uh, North Hollywood. Her name is uh, Melinda, and she's 71 years young. Found Jesus tonight. Isn't that beautiful? God bless you, Melinda. Welcome into the family of God. What took you so long? What took you so long? Here's Ron from, uh, he is from, this looks like from San Antonio, Texas is what it looks like, 42 years old. Los Angeles, California, 41 years of age, and her name is Barbara. And uh, this is from Riverside, California. My, 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 this little lady is 74 years young, and here is Doris, 67 years young, and she is from Riverside, and uh, this is Helen from La Harbor, and she's found Jesus, and here is someone all the way from the state of Ohio. She's 23 years old, and she has found the Lord, and here's someone that is 50 years old. Her name is Judy, and she has found Jesus, and here's another lady, 31 years old from California, who's found Jesus, and on it goes, people. Here's someone. The name is Barbara, and Barbara is six years old. She prayed the sinner's prayer last night and wants a Bible. She got saved last night, and this is the report. She's from right here in Phoenix, Arizona, and she's six years old, and she found Jesus. Isn't that beautiful that they can comprehend and hear the message, and it'll move their lives? Hallelujah. 
Well, it just goes on and on. And you that have not called in, I want you to call. Is Joe ready to sing his song? If Joe's not ready, I'll sing. Whatever's going, well, I'll do it. Brother, I want you to know what we have experienced around here tonight. You realize in a church service how often we have longed to see this kind of response to souls, how many times we've longed to see this kind of response to souls. And tonight, all across this country, all across America, we have had people who have found Jesus Christ, and they're continuing to find Jesus. And to you folks that are out there right now, as the Holy Spirit, I can still feel the wooing of the Holy Spirit. Even though the time of Brother Bernard's preaching has lifted, even though we have prayed the prayer, I feel that that convicting of the Holy Spirit is yet reaching out, and I feel it in my own spirit. I feel it on this platform. And to you that are there that do not know Jesus Christ, and in your heart you may have just tuned in to what's going on. You say, what is this? Is this a party that just ended up? No. This is a party that just begun, and it will go throughout all eternity. You know one thing I enjoy? I was talking to a grandmother the other night in one of the auditoriums after service. And she began to tell me how much she loved Jesus and how long she had served Jesus and how beautiful the life had been serving Jesus. And I said, Mama, you know what's so beautiful about all of this? That 780 million years from tonight, we'll still be talking about it. You know, that's hard for the human mind to comprehend. And you may be even laughing at that. But the Bible talks about eternity. And brother, I have decided where I'm going to spend eternity. There's going to be a lot of noise in eternity. There's going to be a lot of noise in eternity. And I've made up my mind what kind of noise I'm going to be enjoying in eternity. I'm going to be enjoying the praises of the saints of God as they sing hallelujahs and hosannas to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I've made up my mind, as one black preacher said, that my mind's made up that heaven's my home. And many of you that are out there listening tonight, you say, Roger, how do you do it? You do it by just asking Jesus to come into your heart. That's just the way Joe did it. That's just the way Roger did it. It's just the way that Jerry Bernard and Betty and Paul and Jan and everyone that's come across this platform to preach the gospel, every one of us had to say, Jesus, forgive us of our sins. God, come into my heart. Blot out all of that that has brought that between you and I that has kept us separated. We ask him to forgive us, and it seemed as low that Something came all over our being. It was just like cool water that ran all over our bodies. And we found that joy that I'd heard old people talk about. I heard many of men tell me when I was a little bitty boy, I heard them talk about, well, when you get saved, you'll know that you're saved. Well, I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. And you can know that. We're going to be praying. And I want you out there that are watching just to stay with us because God is still pulling. Joe's going to sing for us. We're going to continue to music and we're going to continue to pray and we're going to continue to read the reports and then we're going to pray over all of these reports. Joe, let's sing We Are Persuaded. Here's Joe Baez. Hallelujah. Forgiven, we're called by 
Hallelujah. I thank you over there, baby. All right. Joe is persuaded. I am persuaded. And all these folks out here are persuaded that Jesus Christ is the answer for every one of your needs. And here is a little lady. This is Linda, and this comes from Miami, Florida. And here is someone from over in Fresno, California. Someone from uh, Westminster, and they're 49 years old, and that is Jesse. Here is uh, Roberta, and this comes from Westminster, and she's 21 years old, and this is Jake, and that comes from Spencer, Oklahoma, and she's 66 years young. And here comes someone from, uh, is that Dallas? No, this is Fort Dodd, Fort, it's in Oregon. It's, it's, it's in Oregon, and she's 38 years old. And here's someone that is from Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, she is 60 years old, prayed the sinner's prayer last Thanksgiving Day and rededicated her life to Jesus Christ. And she's 60 years old, 22 years old from Dallas, Texas. And here's someone from Phoenix, Arizona, 53 years old, that is Tammy. And here you come from Fullerton, California, received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Ha, ha, devil, 36 years old. And here's someone, well, yeah, just go on and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Here's someone, that is uh, Howard, 52 years old, and they received the Lord tonight, and that's from Scottsdale, Arizona. Betty Jean, go sing us a song. We're just going to keep singing. We're going to keep praising. Now, we're getting pictures of all this down here. Someone came up a while ago and said, I think this is more than we've had or as much as we've had in any night this week of people who have found Jesus Christ. To you that are viewing in for the first time, each one of those white slips represents somebody who has found Jesus Christ tonight. And those little yellow ones are rededications of their lives to Jesus Christ. So those are all brand new babies and we're going to be putting more down there. And tonight if the lines have been busy and you have tried to get through, hey, I think some of the phones are free right now. It looks like there's about two of them free over there. You might pick up the phone and give us a call right now while you can get through on the lines. And if you want someone to pray with you on your particular need, they're there to do that. Here's Betty Jean to sing the song before the roses bloom again. Here's Betty Jean. Sing for us, babe. God bless Betty Jean as she sings.
And I want you to know, brother, that wouldn't break my heart. I guarantee you wouldn't break my heart. Here is uh, Darren, and they're from uh, Tempe, Arizona, 16 years of age, has found Jesus Christ true to their heart tonight. And you know, we're going to be praying in just a moment. Joe's fixing to sing for us. We're going to be praying. We're going to be going off there in just a few moments. But tomorrow night is going to be camp meeting. Amen. Danny Schaefer is going to be preaching tomorrow night. Amen. And let's see who's going to be our musical guest tomorrow night. Is Joe Baez going to be back with us tomorrow night? Joe's going to be here. And uh, Roger McDuff's going to be here. And we're going to find out who else is going to be here. But we want you to be in the crowd. And if you don't have a ticket to get down in here, you might find out if there's some tickets available where you can come and be a part of this tomorrow night. But we're still going to be having church tomorrow night starting at 8 o'clock. And I might say to you folks that are viewing and you see the 602 number that is here in Phoenix, Arizona, and that is a local number, and then we have the 1-800 number, and you can dial that 1-800. Who else is going to be on music tomorrow night? Joe and Roger McDuff tomorrow night, eh? We're going to have some good singing tomorrow night. So we're going to have preaching. We're going to have that fellow that's long and linky, and he preaches all the way from the bottom of his shoes to the top of his head. And I want you to know he was back here in the dressing room tonight. He was already preaching the sermon. He's like a horse coming out of shoot number nine. It's burning in him. So don't you dare miss it. Don't you dare. Joe, would you sing for us? And what is the song that Joe is, Behold the Lamb, Joe's going to sing this for you. It says, Behold the Lamb. And you folks out there that have enjoyed what has happened tonight, if you haven't called to thank, why don't you do? And if you still want to get in on the prayer request, because we're going to be praying in just a moment, dial the phone numbers there on your screen. Here's Joe to sing, Behold the Lamb. Sing for us, Joe. God bless you. Thank you.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Joe, would you come over here with us? Would you come with us, Brother Crouch? And we're going to pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Do you feel that sweetness of Jesus? As Joe was singing, we felt it. Whatever one of you over there, would you just stand to your feet? We're going to pray. Behold the Lamb. Behold the Lamb. Well, let me tell you, all hell knew what happened around this place tonight. All hell knew about it because these little white slips represent lives that were snatched from the jaws of hell itself. Thank God that we were able to bring it into your home and into your city and into your community. And it's because you care that we was able to do it. The prayer requests that have come in this evening have been so many. The salvations that have come in this evening have been so many. Thank God for what has been accomplished this night. Tomorrow night's going to be another night of just praise and hallelujah. Jan and Paul is going to be here. Brother Schaefer is going to be preaching. Joe is going to be singing. I'm going to be singing. And I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know we're going to have camp meeting. We're going to have camp meeting. I want every one of you, I want you that are there, I want you to stretch your hand with us toward these prayer requests. You that are here in the building with us, and you that are home, you might want to kneel down right in front of that television set because all these little blue slips represent the cries of the hearts of those that are watching right now and been watching through the course of the evening. People in pain mentally, physically, and spiritually. Holy Spirit, this is paper in my hand, but it's souls. And I pray the prayer of faith. God, you said, whatsoever things you bind on this earth, it shall be bound in heaven. And I bind that that has come against the lives of the family of God and has tried to bring torment and pain and stress. I bind it in the name of Jesus. I say to sickness, be gone. I say disease, be gone. Unhappiness, be gone. Restlessness, be gone. To those limbs that will not function, be healed. To that diabetic, be healed. To that blind eye, be open. To those kidneys, be healed in the name of Jesus. To that loved one that's behind prison bars, God, speak to their heart and bring conviction. I speak to the needs of humanity that has cried out to us to pray and believe and stand in the gap. And I thank you for the answer. I thank you for the answer. I thank you for the answer. God hears and he answers prayer. And tonight, as you have been sitting in your home or wherever this might have found you, as it may have found you in a church, it may have found you in a hospital room, may have found you in a prison, wherever it is, just know this, that that same God that we have felt right here is right there with you. And if you do not know him, all you have to do is say, Jesus, Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I want to live for you. It's just that simple. Hey, we've enjoyed being in your home tonight, every one of us. We're looking forward to tomorrow night. God bless you. We'll see you. Watch. Hallelujah. We're so glad you've been with us for Praise the Lord. And if you haven't asked Christ into your life, call a prayer partner now. Pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Our 24-hour prayer partner line is 714-731-1000. If you'd like an audio cassette of Praise the Lord, write and ask for program 224-83. That's 224-83. If possible, check in and love gifts to help the pray the cost of state ministry. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to keep the gospel of Jesus going around the world 24 hours a day. Write to Praise the Lord, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Paul and Jan would like to thank you for your prayers and financial support. You keep us on the air. Thank you. This is Ed Doring saying God bless you. And remember, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. This program was brought to you by the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout the United States of America.